Hey guys, this is Claire from Pen Entertainment, and I am joined today by Ben Goldman from our news team. And we're going to be talking today about the 39th season of Survivor. Now, I've never watched Survivor. I've maybe seen... I've watched them all. Yeah, but Ben has watched them all. So I really need his help today just to break down these first couple episodes of this 39th season. So I started watching it, and my first question was, do they usually start this quickly? Like, okay, so that's a good question. Survivor, traditionally what they do is they throw bags of tools and stuff into the water. You collect whatever you can, and whatever you're able to carry to swim back to the island, and that's what you start with. That was my assumption, because I've watched some other random survival shows, like, for example, Naked and Afraid. Don't ask me why I watched it, but I watched it. And, you know, like, if they, if they get a bare, very bare bones sort of opening into, you know, some random island yeah. where they have to figure out how to actually survive. Well, it helps create some of the tension, too, because then people are like, well, this guy, I don't know if I like him, but he seems like a very valuable, you know, survival skill individual. Right. But not so much this time. So, what I was, so I would assume that part of your, part of the show Survivor hinges on their ability to kind of make it in the wild. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I would, it was a little confusing because everybody walks them to the beach and they're, like, hugging and then they're chopping things and then they're foraging and I didn't, like... You know, what killed me on this season, though, was every season, if, and for any of you Survivor fans out there, you know, every season of Survivor has a twist. They'll have, like, Redemption Island, or so, some island where you have to go and just, like, starve yourself for two weeks. Starvation Something, Island. Like, Starvation Island. They, they do crazy stuff like that. It's always pretty fun twists. Island of the Idols isn't that much fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Sandra, and I like Boston Rob. In their own seasons, they were some of the best survivors that have ever been on the show. But, as just, like, advice characters that are like, this is how you build a fire. Would you like to challenge us to a fire competition? Which is what they do, and if you beat them, you get an idol, and if you lose to them, you lose your vote. Well, it's just, it's not that interesting. It's not that big of a challenge, and it just kind of, I don't really see the point of it. Yeah, I, I was confused about that, too, because I... I, I, I think it's cool that they bring back yeah. winners and that they have... And Sandra, you, know, you don't know this, but Sandra is actually a legend. She's the only person that's ever won the Survivor, like, the Survivor finale twice. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, I thought, I mean, she's cool, Boston Rock. I, the, the fact that they've actually done so well on this, this particular show and they brought them back to mentor yeah. uh, new Survivors... That's cool, it's but a cool I, concept, but right. it's not as like it's not that interesting to add like a real dimension. Yeah, so. I don't. It doesn't seem like they fleshed out a real theme for this season. No, yet. and that's I think that's where the issue comes in. But if you guys had didn't check it out, the most recent episode, which is the third episode of Survivor, it was. I mean, it was, it was one of the better blindsides, honestly. Well, Vince, there was the. You remember about, Vince, right? Yeah, I remember Vince. So let's talk about the vote offs from the from the, these first three episodes. Were they surprising to you or not? First one, I can't remember the guy's name. Not Ronnie. Ronnie was not surprising at all. Was, Ronnie was an. <laughs> everyone thought Ronnie was. <laughs> and Ronnie got voted off like every asshole in Survivor does that's not smart enough to figure out how to survive. Sorry, Ronnie, but you did lose in the first episode. I, yeah, he definitely played it all wrong, I think, and you could tell from day one that he was kind of a sleaze bag, and everybody yep. else picked up on that too, so that wasn't a surprise. But who was the girl that got voted off in the second episode? Molly. Molly. I actually really, I, when, in episode one, I thought Molly was had was a contender for. Why Final did Survivor. you? Why did you like her so much? Because she reminded me of I'm blanking on the girl's name, but it was the bartender that won one of the seasons a couple of years ago. She was really good socially, she was likable, she was strong, but not too strong, and I felt Molly kind of reflected that, but apparently I wasn't the only one. It looks like the whole tribe felt that way. Yeah, I the whole playing it kind of safe, but I'm the popular girl, but I'm an a, like, but I'm also kind of average at But she's everything. not like rude or anything. She was a strong character. I, I don't know. She didn't stand out to me until... But all... that's what I think. I think that's what made her yeah. strong. So, I mean, the I, lack I get of standing it. Out. I get the flying under the radar st strategy. I totally get that. But it seemed like she wasn't really flying under the radar uh, because of this whole high but school yeah. drama that they... And that whole tribe, more like the popular kids and the unpopular they kids. They metastasized an entire like storyline about them being in... Essentially oh, yeah. in high school. But the, the today's episode, did you see last night's episode? I saw much of it. I okay. saw the highlights. So
So in last night's episode, Vince got voted off, and Vince was a member of what's the uh, the ethnic group that um, the he's a he's a he's the first Hmong. Uh, Survivor, or, candidate. survivor to his casting. And the yeah. Hmongs were ethnically genocided several, like a decade ago, ethnically right? Genocide. Ethnically genocide. Ethnical genocide. Ethnic genocide. They, ethnic genocide. Ethnic genocide. They've been displaced for quite some time uh, with across uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, mostly but, Southeast Asia. And yeah. that's where we learn the real lesson is while many of the Hmongs that have lived in that situation have absolutely survived in caves. Vince has it. Vince grew up a Californian guy, and Vince played like someone that has not survived in any real situation. I think I think that's kind of a discredit to like what he could actually do on the island. I think that maybe I mean if I he was going to do it on the island, he lost his chance. No, I think that he could maybe physically survive on the island a little bit better than some of the characters, but mentally he definitely wasn't in it from date. I mean, he's from Palo Alto. He was really he maybe was too, way too confident took, in his own skills. He was too. a little he was way too chill for, because in the first episode, I remember that he said that he was, that he like 100% trusted Elaine. Yep. And anybody who can say that Elaine's they- Elaine's strong, by the way. Um, anybody who says that they can 100% trust somebody in episode one is absolutely going to lose. Well, you, so I've seen people do that to their faces and then go on the confessional camera and be like, I'm just trying to trick them. No, but they That's said- That's fair, but No, he, but they said them. that on the confessional camera. That's the thing is I heard- Elaine, I see the was, thing is Elaine's good. I don't see her surviving. I, I don't see don't. her either. She I draws in with too many people. I think that she's, she's just like sweet redneck woman who likes to like work on farms outdoors, but she's just she's not. smarter than people give her credit for, for sure. But I think that she's also, I don't know, she's yep. she she doesn't quite she hasn't quite shown that edge to me yet. But Vince though, so what Vince did, guys, is and Claire probably doesn't realize this because she hasn't been a Survivor fan as long as uh, as long as I and probably some of you guys have. But Vince made the classic mistake when his tribe decided to start a forming their own little like coalitions. Vince was the one guy that joined the female coalition, which to anyone that's watched Survivor, you understand that any any time a guy decides that he can turn on the other men to join the female coalition, he is doomed, doomed to get turned on by that coalition. Hmm. Is that really what's happened in every every in single time? There's I don't think I can't think of a single time a man has joined a female coalition on Survivor and they didn't stab him in the back for not being a girl. So maybe the key to winning Survivor is watching a lot of Survivor. No, it is. Well, have you ever? Um, well, you should watch one of one of my favorite Survivor seasons. I'm blanking on what season it is, but it's the one where Cochran won. Cochran went to Harvard, wrote his entire dissertation paper for graduate a school true on Survivor. He's been watching it since he was six years old. First season he came on, he was physically weak, but he did impressive. They invited him on again, and that guy won the whole thing. Mind blowing, not that athletic, really nerdy, but he had such a keen understanding of Survivor and like the way people act, act in it that he was able to go all the way to the end of the series. I, yeah, you definitely can't count that as an advantage. So, uh, the situation on these two teams, uh, Vol Vokai and uh, Lyro. Lyro. I I don't uh, I don't know. Everybody bugs me a little bit, but the people. But that's who, classic Survivor, though. But the the character that definitely annoyed me a ton was Nora. Nora. Our socially less than adept yoga instructor, who who's. Yeah, who presumably had a really bad time in high school. I was like, who hurt you? Oh, she's the one that complains about the popular kids all the time, Yeah, I right? was like, she's like who, they're just the popular kids. Who hurt you, and why have you continued to carry that into... Into your newest TV show. But, so basically what happens, guys, is Vince goes out there, gets voted off, somehow the others survive. The older guy, the NHL player, I'm blanking on the name of right now. Uh, Tom. Tom. Tom, the NHL player, absolutely ruined his chances on Survivor last night, though, with the way he reacted to his tribe. What did he, he was do? accusing them of stuff because he thought he was going to get voted off, so he just went on the full offensive. Um. No one voted for him. But he basically, he's, he marked I don't, himself for the next episode. Yeah, I don't see his torch being lit much longer. That's just the honest to God truth. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll let Claire bring us out since it's her show. Uh, Do you want to go ahead and give it a rating? Yeah, I, let's see. Out of 10 torches, 10 tiki torches, I would give it mm, seven. seven. Oh, hey, perfect agreement, perfect harmony, guys. It looks it like Survivor a is a seven out of is a seven out of ten. Some of the Survivor seasons have absolutely been ten out of tens. All right. Well, hopefully the season continues to get better, 
and they focus less on the drama and more on the actual challenges. Amen to that. All right, take care. We'll see you next time. Follow our YouTube channel to watch our featured videos and original shows. See you there.